Uh, I'm somewhat, uh, well, actually, I'm glad you mentioned the drain line, Kerry, uh, at least touched on it, because I wanted to ask you about that later, but I, th I think you covered what, you know, what I wanted to ask. Um, I must say I'm somewhat shocked that the hotel housekeeping staffs don't read the Save the Environment cards that are in all the <laughs> hotel bathrooms that I see. So, uh, One more question for uh, John and Bill. Uh, if you can just ask, uh, let's let us know, is there like a regular schedule that you have where you update the, the map test uh, procedure? Or is it uh, just kind of more when it looks like it might need some fine tuning? Yeah, yeah we used to, um, just so everybody knows, the original map test was a one-off job. It was one set of 50 toilets, and that was it. It was published, and the funding was gone, and there was, it was never going to be a second map report. Uh, it, was never, it was never meant to become what it has become. Uh, we had some manufacturers that scored very badly on that initial test. They came to our lab uh, to see the test. They quickly, we discussed ways of doing it, and then between our suggestions and their ingenuity, they improved the performance of the toilet, came back to us to say, this is hardly fair that your report shows that we're a terrible toilet, but we've made all these improvements. Now it works quite well. Again, I said I commiserate with them, but the, the report is done. We can't do anything about it. So after about the third time a manufacturer did this to me, I said, we'll, we can put an addendum out. I'll, I'll reissue the report with the three little lines on the bottom saying your, your toilet used to score whatever, 150. On whatever date it was, it was tested again and scores 350 or whatever. We put that out, and within literally like two or three days, I had calls from almost every manufacturer saying, I didn't know we could retest and add more toilets and, and get improvements made. And, and that's kind of where the sluice gates opened and the manufacturers took off competing against each other. So at that time, we just started updating it when we had 40 or 50 or 60 additional models. Uh, but it was very onerous. Uh, task to update the report and just recently we've switched to updating it almost on a weekly basis where it's put on the web weekly uh, there it helps for a, num a number of reasons one now it's an Excel based sheet that you can sort on so if somebody wants to go in and sort on I only want uh, brand X elongated uh, ADA height one piece toilets they can sort on that very quickly and find the list Two, it makes it easy for us if somebody calls us and says we've changed the model number of that or the model number it doesn't end in an X, that it ends in a Y or a Z as we say in Canada, uh, then we can go in and change it immediately. I can change it that day. I don't have to wait three months and then say I forgot to do this one little request. So it is now, uh, it's downloadable, anybody can download it, save it to their own computer, but it's, it's done, updated almost every week, although it won't be done this week because we're both here. Okay. Um, let, let me add uh, that the the process has evolved from the very beginning. Um, it was sort of inferred at the, at the start uh, uh, that we just sort of took the uh, process from Toto and incorporated it into some um, some report. But that it's nothing like that, and it's uh, it's evolved. The, the the miso paste is different. The uh, way the test is conducted is different, um, and so over a period of time, the process or the protocol has evolved such that it's uh, now um, significantly different than what I believe is done at the, at the Toto plant and in their lab. So there's no comparison really, and I just want to make that I'd beg clear. to differ a little bit, John. What's that? I'd beg to differ. So. Um, there's going to be additions made to the, to the map test, which will focus maybe with different materials or whatever, but the fact is is that what we're doing now does not resemble what is being done or was being done at that time at Toto. Um, I might say that the latest uh, map report online is, uh, contains maybe 1,400 different fixtures. and. Um, Stephanie mentioned that she had 518 water scents certified on her list. Our water scents list, which includes those that have not yet been submitted to water scents, is over, well over 630 fixtures. And so more than half, something like 87% of all HETs that we have tested have been water scents certified as well. Thanks, John. Uh, before I open it up to questions, uh, Fernando, any kind of response, rebut on this one or not? 
I, I just beg to differ on that issue. Okay. Um, okay. I think any variations to the MISO are uh, minute in, in nature, and uh, the substance pretty much remains the same. Okay. One more question for John and Bill. Uh, as far as the expansion of the MAP testing to other product categories, when might we expect an announcement on that? Water Smart Innovations. Okay. At the show? Okay. Thanks. All right. As I had hoped, we do have some time for questions from, uh, from you in the audience. Uh, anyone who has a question or perhaps was turned away, uh, couldn't find a seat at Bill or John's clipboard session this morning, now is your chance to, uh, to talk about toilet flushing performance. Yes. Harvey Sachs, and I learned a great deal at this session, and thank you. But I guess the echo in my mind is to the fitness to purpose discussion yesterday in, in Greywater. And I hope that we will be able to resist the temptation to continue the escalation in terms of clearance volume or clearance mass. This is nuts to, to ask for a fixture to clear something which is a hundredth of a percent of the occasions. It, it Harvey, I wish you had been with me in uh, that lab in Japan because there was an incredible mass that I'll never forget. So <laughs> I'm, with, I'm, I'm with you on that. <laughs> I have no response. <laughs> None needed. That's okay. Well, there it, it, to respond, there is a uh, an argument both ways. One is to just go as um, as high as possible, and there's another argument that says let's keep it realistic, where uh, and lower the 1,000 threshold uh, maximum down to something more uh, more close to the uh, real world demand upon a fixture. John Swaffield from Herrick Water in Edinburgh. Just thought to mention what we did in the UK. Back in 1999, I was responsible for the government uh, committee that brought in uh, 1.6 gallon or 6 litre dual flush WCs in the UK. And in order to do that, we had to come up with a uh, test specification which would allow the sale of um, WCs, particularly imported WCs, uh, into the UK. Uh, they were called the Secretary of State's Rules for WC Sale. Anyway, uh, we took a rather different view because we thought that what we should be measuring is an overall performance, not just one part of a performance. So that our uh, test specification was built Around, around about 180 grams to 200 grams, based on work by Professor Feacham, and also based on things like the DIN standard and the Australian standard, which call for three sheath uh, discharge solids. We also thought that you can't divorce bowl discharge from drain line carry, and therefore we introduced two measures of drain line carry the first one being the amount of water which leaves the bowl behind the solid because that's the prim primary driver for good drain line carry and we set that as around about 60%. Anything less than 60% failed the test. And we also thought about 10 meters at 1 in 80 was a reasonable test. Now, I think if you, know, if you guys want to test a thousand or two thousand grams in a toilet and use the toilet as a mass propulsion device. Um, that's fine. You know, I mean, far be it for, for me to disagree. But I would say that what would concern me is that as a manufacturer or working for a manufacturer, I actually skewed the design of my WC in order to meet a totally unrealistic set of design conditions at the expense of drain line carry or the mass of water behind the solid. And I think that's the big danger here. You know, you can, want, you can flush as much as you want, it's not a problem. But if you actually skew the design to achieve that at something else's expense, and you don't know what expense you might have because you're not testing for it. So I think that would be uh, the view from the UK 
on that. Thank you.